If you're packing up the car for a long trip with the kids or just obsessed with everything spooky like me, here's my list for the top five places in Massachusetts you should never visit. And coming in at number five, we have the Houghton Mansion. Built in the 1890s in North Adams, Massachusetts, for the mayor himself, Albert Charles Houghton, this neoclassical revival style mansion sits on 172 Church Street. A family man, Albert, was the president of Arnold Printworks, a prominent textile factory in North Adams. His wife, Cordelia, Daughter Mary and himself had owned and lived on the property right up until the fatal car accident which took the lives of the family in 1914. On an early summer morning, Albert and his family accompanied by another family, Dr. and Mrs. Dutton and their daughter, and of course the family chauffeur himself, Mr. Witters, had decided to head out into the countryside for a leisurely drive, a drive that ultimately took their lives. Unfortunately, for everyone on that August 1st morning, after a steep turn, the car lost control and proceeded to screech off the road, resulting in a rolling fatal wreck. All the women in this tragedy losing their lives, with the men barely surviving from the multitude of injuries. On August 11th, just 10 days after the accident, without his wife and daughter, Albert mysteriously died in the home from what doctors think was a broken heart. It is said that three ghosts haunt the Houghton Mansion, including Albert himself, Albert's daughter Mary, and the driver, Mr. Witters. The mansion remained with the Houghton family until 1926 when Albert's daughter Florence and her husband sold the building to the Freemasons. This is when the spookiness really started happening. Through its multitude of use throughout the years, additions to this historic site were added on by the Masons, using it for ritual and spiritual purposes, making this story even weirder. Over over the years, there have been countless paranormal witnesses claiming that the ghosts roaming the halls of the basement, Mr. Witters himself, guilt ridden with the responsibility of the crash, and Mr. Witters took his own life shortly after returning home with injuries, and residents that have stayed at the site have claimed that the manly figure aimlessly rummaging through the basement is the driver himself. Among these claims have another spirit lurking in Mary's bedroom. It is said that overnighters have witnessed multiple bright lights and auras flying around the bedroom in the middle of the night. I wouldn't even step foot into this house, let alone set up camp and spend the night. No way. The Houghton Mansion remains a tourist attraction and hotspot for paranormal goers worldwide and to this day is one of the most haunted and mysterious sites in all of Massachusetts. Number 4. The Hoosick Tunnel The Hoosick Tunnel, from the Algonquin word place of stones and the Mohawk word forbidden, is a 4.75 mile active railroad tunnel in western Massachusetts that passes through the Hoosick Range, an extension of Vermont's Green Mountains and runs from Deerfield River in the town of Florida to the city of North Adams. The construction began in 1815 and ending in 1875 with a budget of 2 million, at the time the largest tunnel ever constructed, and it was later the result of taking lives of over 200 men during its construction entirety, earning it the nickname from locals, the Bloody Pit. This haunted, barren, 5 mile, completely enclosed stretch was subject to multiple accidents and deaths over the years, giving the tunnel its haunting history and reputation of being cursed itself. With the word forbidden, did the Mohawks know something that the workers didn't? Essentially, this cold, underground, pitch black hole became one of America's strangest gravesites, resulting in everything from mysterious gas leaks, dynamite explosions, roofs collapsing, and even mechanic failures resulting in a mass flood. For the past decades, there have been numerous paranormal activity witnesses who have documented strange events from police officers to the freight conductors themselves. Some of the reports over the last 100 years included numerous farmers and wagons ending up in different areas of the railroad, missing hours of time. The farmers had claimed that when spending time around the railroad and its tracks, that memory and confusion would always set in. Some residents have claimed that they have even been chased out of the tunnel by an unexpected freight train chugging along aggressively through the tunnel like a bat out of hell, and then vanishing. Numerous ghostly figures resembling workers roam the dark tunnel, and if that isn't scary enough, some people, including hearing the echoes and screams of even the workers who were buried alive under the rock, still holding their tools, or even seeing ghostly figures in pumping chambers where numerous men tirelessly making rafts not to drown. The Hoosick Tunnel remains one of the most visited and haunted places, marking it just one of the sites you'll probably never find me at. Just in 2020, the tunnel was yet again subject to a mysterious collapse resulting in months of repair. Yeah, I say stop fixing it and just let it be. Number 3. The USS Salem 
Planes, trains, and automobiles. Well, almost. A big boat, the USS Salem. A heavy cruiser built for World War II in 1945 was originally built for action. Its bold, aggressive architecture was one of the last as it was more of a bluff to its opponents than actually a hero of war. In May 1949, war departments handed the Salem's helm to Captain J.C. Daniel himself. The ship was built and updated with what was then the latest military tech and weapons, and it was meant to strike fear in whom or whatever was in her way. Although the ship wasn't used in any action during World War II, it acted as a flagship, training operation, and main purpose as a threat to the naval enemy. It wasn't until the USS Salem had responded to the 1953 Ionian earthquake, or also known as the Great Kefalonia earthquake, as it hit the southern Ionian islands of Greece on August 12th, devastating the entire area. The USS Salem landed on Greek shores and acted as an improvised hospital and morgue, giving it its famous name, the Sea Witch. The ship was decommissioned shortly after its rescue and lays in Boston's harbor as a tourist attraction from all of its dark history. Some of the paranormal activities that arise on the ship include the Burning Man, who smells of rank death and can be seen in the mess hall where the bodies have been stored. Another famous apparition on the ship is the ghost girls who lurk the halls of the ship. Little ghostly figures can be seen and felt on the legs of tour goers. Some people claim that the ship is even home to hellhounds, an aggressive pack of ghostly creatures that roam the ship growling and scratching at closed doors. Yeah, the next time my dog scratches at my door, She's going up for adoption, I'm sorry. Number two, the Lizzie Borden House. This quaint bed and breakfast located at 232 2nd Street is home to one of America's most haunted and mysterious homes, the Lizzie Borden House. Gets its haunt from an unsolved murder of Lizzie Borden in 1892. One of the most infamous true crime figures known for her murdering of her father and stepmother with several blows to the head with a hatchet. Oof, ouch. Although acquitted, the killings remain unsolved to this day. This case earned earned notoriety and much that the popular local children's rhyme had been linked to this death. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. That is horrible. On August 4th, 1892, Lizzie's stepmother of 27 was struck 19 times while her father Andrew was hit 11. Although Lizzie Borden was acquitted and found not guilty, the dark history draws in crowds every night for its nightly tour of the premises. The Lizzie Borden room, the infamous room where all of the murders took place, is the most requested and most popular for paranormal overnighters. And not only can you enjoy a lovely inclusive breakfast to yourself, but the nightly house tour, ghost tour, and ghost hunt attracts fans of horror every night of the year. Yeah, that's terrifying. And there's a jingle to it. I don't like that at all. And coming in at number one, the Salem Witch Trials. We can't talk about haunted places in Massachusetts if we're not gonna bring up the witch trials. And I'm not talking about Sabrina the Teenage Witch Witches or anything of cute of that nature. These famously documented witch trials need no introduction and unfortunately lays way to one of the most horrific events based in truth. The sight of mass hysteria and hangings of supposed witches took place here and occurred in colonial Massachusetts between 1692 and 1692. More than 200 people were accused of practicing witchcraft or better known back then as the devil's magic and 20 were ultimately executed. Eventually the colony admitted the trials were a mistake and compensated the families of those convicted. Uh, okay, yeah, sorry. I just thought uh, when you sneezed, you didn't say bless you, so I just, I would already don't like you, so I figured you were a witch, I'm really sorry. Since then, the story of the trials has become famous in paranoia and injustice, and it continues to baffle researchers to this day. We all know the famous play written by American playwright Arthur Miller in 1953, The Crucible, depicting the mass hysteria and drama during these trials. This was the perfect time if you didn't like someone that a strategic and untimely sinister accusation led to the demise of thy neighbor. I saw Sarah Good with the devil. I saw Goody Osborne with the devil. Who else don't I like? I saw Bridget Bishop with the devil. Abigail, end of act one. Since the start of the trials and hysteria in North America, other European countries shortly followed with their own mass witch hunts, resulting in somewhere between 40,000 and 60,000 tried and executed for witchcraft. That's a lot of broomsticks. The Salem Witch Trials of Salem, Massachusetts is still one of the world's biggest hotspots for mystery and paranormal story. I must have missed some places. What do you think? Do you think there are some more terrifying places in Massachusetts that I've never heard of? I'm never going to visit them anyway because I'm a huge baby. But let me know what you think the next top five haunted places in Massachusetts are. And until next time, I'm your host, Kyle McWaters.